Darlene, thanks for joining us. I'm glad that you're here with us today. I'm looking forward to seeing some of your images. Uh, Darlene is a, a wonderful educator as well as a photographer, and she has a ton of information. Uh, she's also going to be featured in a new book that we're going to be releasing later this week, maybe even today. Uh, it's a new ebook all about portraiture, and we're very excited. We think you guys are going to enjoy this. So, Darlene, I want to get out of your way, but what are you going to be showing folks today? What are we going to be talking about? I've actually got some of the images from the ebook. Uh, Doug suggested I use those. So, I've got some street and travel photography. I know most of us haven't been traveling in a while, so we can live vicariously forward to it. <laughs> for our images. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm wearing orange today because as Ev mentioned, it's a sad day in Canada. So I'm wearing orange to, um, to be stand in solidarity with my indigenous friends today. Thank you for that. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of the way, but I'll keep an eye on the chat pod and the Q&A pod. And if there's anything super relevant, I may occasionally interrupt. But uh, I want to let you have as much time as possible for your presentation. So take it away. All right. I'm sharing my screen. Uh, let me get this Zoom thing out of the way. Can you see my screen OK now? Yep. We're working great. Webinar? OK. So um, my workflow is similar to what you guys were demonstrating earlier in terms of I generally go from Lightroom um, into Luminar or actually I'll go from Lightroom to Photoshop. I think you mentioned that workflow as well and then work as a smart object. So even more non-destructive and I love that workflow. Um, but I've also actually created, just created a set of templates. Maybe you don't even know about this yet for um, portraits. So I wanted to show you a few of these. Now, this is one of my favorite images that I took in Japan of this anime character. Um, I know that Ev was mentioning anime as well. So funny that. And um, one of the things that I liked about this image is the costume. So I wanted to bring out the costume. So one of the questions I get a lot from like students and my followers on my YouTube channel stuff when I'm demonstrating editing is, how do you know what to do to an image, right? And that's why I love the templates because if you don't know what to do, just play with a few and see what comes up. Um, so I'll show you a couple that I made. Actually, I made one for this image in particular um, and a couple of them that work really great. So I made one called Ghoulish Grunge and I wanted to really punch up the texture and give it like a cinematic um, look. So this is what I came up with for this one. And I really love the tones and things that it kind of creates something a little bit different that goes with the costume. The other thing that I looked at when I'm editing this image is this background over here is kind of you know busy and messy. So I created something with a bokeh image um, and that's something else I'm working on as well as a set of bokeh texture overlays that will help you to fix your images that have sort of messes in the background. So I want to work with this one and apply this template that I created and just show you how I can quickly create a style and fix problems in this image. So just by flipping this template, so I'm over here in the local masking tool and you can see the texture has been applied. And all I did was flip it so that it's over here on this side, right? And something else I might do is mask it a little bit because I don't want this coming over so much onto the subject. So I'm gonna use a gradient mask and then I'm just gonna drag it so that it comes over like this. Uh, that should work for me. Why is that not working, Richard? So that should work to mask off this part here. Yep, you can invert it if you need to. Yeah. Just click on the three dots. Yeah, let's see what's happening. No, oh, no, I got nothing. All hmm. right, let's clear it. Let's clear it. Fill it. And uh, let's try that again. I was having trouble with that the other day too. Yeah, it's not working for me. All right, so I'm gonna do a radial mask and see if that works. So I just wanna get it off of the subject. Well, that's not working either. <laughs> of course, technology for me today is not gonna work, right? So I'm just gonna get it off of her face. Um, so I'm just using the erase tool to mask it off this part of the character, right? So I've still got the bokeh spilling over a little bit and I'm gonna lower my opacity and just take a pass down this side here. Right. So I've quickly used this little template to fill in this background and then I can go to work if I want to go and enhance the subject a little bit more. So I might use the AI um, enhance under enhance AI accent AI. I use that a lot and that's going to help us punch up the contrast 
That's doing a nice job. Let's take it all the way. That's doing a really nice job. And I think I'm gonna crop it a little bit because I don't like this part on the side here. So another question that comes up for me a lot is how do you decide what to crop? And I find that when I use the composition AI, it does a good job of sort of choosing the size that needs to be cropped, but often I just need to move it around, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I wanna keep the top of her head and I wanna get rid of that stuff on the right. And I might go a little free form on this one. Oh, like that. So really quickly, I'll do a before and after again, just by using this template that I've created with this overlay, I was able to go from this to this using about two different steps. I like it because it, it really builds off of the color there. And, and in this case, the gold works nicely. Um, but Darlene, if there were different colors, would you mind going back to your um, your overlay for a second? I, I think a lot of people miss under the local masking with the texture that you got those advanced controls there that are hidden. You could change the color of your bokeh pretty easily. Yippers, just like that. Yeah, so you don't need a million of these. You just need a couple of good ones and then you can make them whatever color you want. Exactly. And I've dialed down the saturation because this one was really yellow. Um, you could even take it all the way down and just have white bokeh. There you go. Nice. I well done. Contrast of it. Now, these sliders are only affecting the overlay, not the underlying image. So keep that in mind when you're applying your textures. Yeah, awesome. and you can actually have up to 10 textures. And uh, some of you were, you know, I've, I've made a few comments here. I can't tell you exactly what's coming because I don't know when it's coming, but I will just say that uh, we've heard from many of you desires to see more expansion in the those tools. You can keep sending the requests, but what I will say, which is software code is we've heard you. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so we got it. We heard you, we understand. You'll see the local masking tool continue to get better. Cool, up to 10 is awesome. So this next image I chose because I, I've done what Evgeny does is he, I've already created the after image. So what you're looking at is the after image. So you wanna see what the beginning one looks like? There we go. Absolutely, nice. Wow, that's a great change. So the sky was really blown out. Um, and this is actually one of the templates I created as well because I find that um, people, that are doing portraits and and that's my forte is people pictures don't often think about sky replacement but i do because in cases like this i could i could do some manipulating and and the sky is actually if i go back into my history here uh let me see where did i apply that there we go so i edited it a different way and i'm just showing the history here so if you're not sure or familiar with that that's the little clock icon on the side panel here. So this was the original edit that I did to this image and that's the original sky. So there is plenty of detail in the sky there, but I just wanted to see what it would look like if I applied this sky replacement. So I'm gonna go down into here and show you what I've done. And I've used the scene relighting because the beautiful thing about this is that it matches the tonality on him at, to match the sky, right? So the original sky was blue and you can see that now everything is very orange. Um, I can also change the position a little bit here and these new sliders to change the position of the sun. So you wanna make sure for one example here that see the light is coming from this side. You can see it on this side of his face. You wanna make sure that if you do a sky replacement it's coming from the same direction because if I flipped this and put the sun over here, for example, okay, that doesn't work, right? So my brain says, well, the light is coming from here on him, but it's coming from here on the sky, right? So that doesn't work. So I'm just gonna put it back where it was, somewhere in there, right? So always make sure when you're doing your sky replacements that the lighting direction matches and use these scene relighting to make it match in the, in the original scene as well. So I was and playing with this same template on another image. Let me just- Darlene, show you. before you leave this image, could you oh, just yep. go to that horizon position slider for a second, that horizon yeah. position group? Yep. Um, the middle block there, right below, not sky orientation, but the next block down. This so one's... in there, there's a really important slider that helps make this more natural. And so uh, it's gonna open up here in a second. It looks like it's just decoding. But yeah. um, what that's gonna do is there's a great 
um, blending there. And there we go, uh, the mask refinement, that's good. Horizon blending, I'm sorry, you had it under sky orientation, I missed it. So you used a little bit of it. Could you turn that off for a second, that one slider down, the horizon blending? Ah, okay. Turn it off so people see oh. what it looks like if you don't use it. It's kind of like, it's there, but it doesn't blend. And, and you've got that vanishing point. And I could see you've got some hills back there. So as you take the horizon blending up, it just creates this really nice transition and, and makes the skies seamlessly blend together. So I just encourage you to use that horizon blending like Darlene did there, you know, she had it turned on. It's just a really important way to make that believable. And then the other thing you did, Darlene, that's essential for portrait tools is you actually blurred your sky so I it did. matched the blur level of the trees. I did. Yeah, so I got the defocus set to two because I felt that I, I actually zoomed in and I looked at the trees and I went, okay, how blurry are they? And I sort of matched the blurriness of the sky to the blurriness of the trees. Because if yeah. you go too far, then it also doesn't look realistic. Well done. Exactly. Thank you. Okay, so now I've got another one that I applied it to that was a really fun image. Um, this is one that I shot in Havana, Cuba. We hired this model who was a ballet dancer with the Cuban ballet to pose for us. And I wanted to show you a couple of the, of the templates because a lot of times different templates will work um, on different images and give them a totally different look, right? So as I mentioned, if you're not sure, if, especially if you're a beginner to editing and you're not sure what you wanna do with an image, try a few different templates. Um, if, even if it's not a portrait image, try some of the portrait templates, try macro templates, try cinematic, right? So this is the one that um, I had created for the anime character. And I think it works really well on this image as well. Um, it gives it kind of a really cool old world feel, which goes really nicely with, with Cuba, right? Um, another way to go on this one is a template that I created that is more of a sepia, I, I call it antique touch, and it makes it look like, a, like an old faded image, right? And I think that works for this one as well. But I wanted to show you that same one that I just used on the guy in the pineapple farm, which is um, farmer in Nicaragua. So again, traveling, that's that same template. So look at the temperature and the color change on her. And I might wanna do some sky flipping and adjusting here because she's got the light coming from the other direction. So I actually lit her with flash um, coming from the side. You can see the shadow here, so flash off camera. And I might even find that I wanna move that sky, that sun, you can see the sun here, a little bit more to the left, not so much. Yeah, and you guys might not have noticed, but with the last update, the sky is now detecting the horizon as well as the scale of the photo. So, you know, when Darlene applied this sky, since this photo was composed differently, the sky scaled to match her photo better automatically uh, so that it's recognizing things like the leading lines and the horizon line, even though it was different between the two photos. Exactly. And I'm actually going to not defocus this one because if I zoom in a bit more, um, we should be able to see that this background is a lot more uh, in focus than the other one. So I might only want like a one defocus as opposed to the, the template. Uh, how are we doing there? And you oh, did a nice job there on the mask refinement. You could play, you know, that's tough with the building right there, here. but you did yeah. fix details, which definitely helped the trees. And then you could play with closed gaps. I find that fixed details with less closed gaps tends to be the solution here. You gotta be careful That's not to- That's exactly overlap. what I tend to use as well, yeah. So we could play with this one a little bit, just ever so slightly around these, these posts here. Um, actually, I might actually even go in and use the erase tool and erase those things because they're kind of irritating. So I might even just get rid of them completely. But I wanted to show this one because that same template if I don't use the relight, let's just see what happens if I turn this all the way down, right? So the original image is much cooler and it doesn't then match the sky, right? So we wanna make sure that you use that relight to your full advantage, right? Like so. All right, let's see what else we can do. 
Uh, I've got another one here. Um, this is one that I applied a few different things on and I did not use a template here, right? So this is another one where this is the after image. And this is one that I talk about in the ebook that you mentioned, uh, portraits. So this is an Aghori holy man photographed in Varanasi. So this is the Ganges River in India. And if, if you ever are familiar with Varanasi, they do the burning of the cremations there right on the river. So it's very hazy. It looks very much like this. So this is dawn and we've got a flash off camera here with a soft box. And let me just show you, that's the original. Right? So you can see how hazy it is. The sun is, is somewhat behind him, but it's so hazy that it's kind of nondescript. So I wanted to make the lighting in the sky match him a little better and have a little bit more sort of um, interest. So I've done all kinds of things here. I did a sky replacement. I've added the sun rays. Right? You can see that the sun rays is coming out and I made sure that when I placed it, it matched where I put the sun in that sky replacement. So it's right on the dot there, right? And I also added some birds, right? So these are the birds. And the cool thing that I like about this, let me do the place object, right? You can actually see that the birds are behind him, but it's smart enough to know not to put the birds over top his face, right? Um, and I love the mask refinement because it allows me to do that even more and defocus the birds, which I did. Okay, so again, if I don't defocus or sort of um, use this mask refinement, the birds looked too sharp and they didn't match the image. So I always want to make sure that anything I'm placing in that's not in the original image, um, I'm using these tools to make it look like it's natural, right? And, um, and, and the last update, Darlene, if you can leave that augmented sky tool open, you guys might have noticed if you haven't updated your software yet, Darlene has visual previews there. And this is something we've brought to sky AI and augmented sky, and you'll see more of this coming, but it allows you to add objects. And if you guys haven't done so, I'm gonna paste a link to the marketplace. There's, uh, I believe a three pack of additional objects you could download for free, that's very cool. And Vanelli and Angela recently did a couple of Coffee Break episodes on how to make your own sky objects uh, if you guys had them. So it gives you some flexibility to just browse and you can see cool things. And you once you add them here, you've got them in your library and you can see them. So it's really gotten a lot easier to use. Yeah, I think the rainbows and so on are new and some of these uh, planets and stuff, yeah. So I could have, I could have a, a balloon in the background if we want instead. Um, let's just go back to the birds because they fit. There was tons of birds there because there's lots of fish in the, in the river. So it actually makes sense to have the birds there because anybody that has been to Varanasi um, knows that that's true. Okay, so the other thing I did here was I used a lot of the atmospheric haze slider and then sky replacement because when I was doing the sky replacement, this sky was very vibrant, which you'll see in a moment here. Um, and it didn't match. I've also defocused it, right? Uh, let's see, where are we? Yeah, I defocused it a little bit because it's in the background here. My computer is running slow because we're live streaming. I find this happens all the time to me. We're trying to push out video and process at the same time. Can you see that? Let's see if it looks a little sharper. Does that work now? Let me see if I can drag this up and you'll see the difference. So see how it just adds that haze? That works better versus it's too vibrant and dark, right? So I wanna make sure that the haziness of the situation matches the sky as well as the blur, okay? Very important. The other thing that I did here was I used toning in a way that may, many people may not use. So what I found was that the light that, because I'd used a flash here and the sky behind him is very orange pink, you can see the original boat looks kind of um, pink blue. And when we, when we finished it, um, it didn't match the rest of the scene. So you see how the boat looks kind of blue here? So what I did was I went highlight and I added some saturation. And if I turn on the mask, you'll be able to see, I've just painted it into the boat so that I added a little bit of this yellow, yellowish green. Sorry about that, my computer is, is there we go. Uh, so I added it just to this area here, right? If I change the color, you can see that I'm just affecting the color of the boat, right? 
So I wanted it to match him a little better and the sky. So I just did that on the boat. And I love that about the tools in here is that every tool uh, with the exception of light can be masked and applied to just part of the image. And I love that. Yeah, we don't do that on the light tool because you have some of your decoding happening there. We also yeah. tend to avoid it on um, optics because it would be weird to shift things and we don't do it on body. So there's only like three tools because it would basically create this weird state where if you had like lens correction on an image and then you blurred it or masked it, it would just look very strange. So we do it on all the creative tools and almost all the grading tools. Awesome. Uh, are there any questions that anybody sent in about anything there? Uh, they're just reacting and loving what's there. Uh, she, they are wondering though, um, you know, how are you going to make those bokeh images available? Are you going to have those on your website or are yes. you putting them yes, on Skyline site? What are you doing? Uh, they're going to be on both actually. And the templates were, well, I'm just working with Skyline right now with my team to, with Tanya and um, Leona, I think it is, to get that up in the marketplace. They're going to be in the in the main templates page so shortly. We're just finalizing a few things. And they'll also be, um, I have textures available right now, and the bokas uh, will be available. I have a sky pack as well. You can get to those uh, at my website, digitalphotomentor.com, um, photo forward slash, um, where's my my chat window here forward slash shop i'll pop that into the chat for everybody and um, when the templates are available you'll be able to see those there as well i just wanted to show this last one here because this is an image that i did from an infrared converted camera and i'm, I'm probably going to create a few for these as well um, just to show anybody that's got a converted camera mine has Oh, people always ask me. It's the it's the one that's just got a little bit of color. I think it's the 5500 filter. And I wanted to replicate more of a, a real true infrared look. So what I did was I used some of the portrait tools here on her face and her um, skin. But I wanted to show you this is a little trick that I discovered when you're doing black and white, especially um, even if you're doing a color image, the eyes came out really dark and they do, especially if you're shooting infrared, right? So the original, her eyes are really dark. So what I did was I did a color replacement, right? So I can give her any color eyes I want, right? I could give her cat eyes if we want to do something really funky, right? But I just wanted to brighten them more. So I chose blue and then I cranked up the visibility, right? So I really wanted to we could increase the flare as well. I really wanted to punch up her eyes. And I also darkened the lips because the same thing happens again with the infrared is the lips come out almost white, right? So I've darkened up her, her lips and lightened up her eyes. And I've also added a grain here, the film grain, right? Because I wanted to also replicate that infrared. I could even go a little bit farther with it. Yeah, and that film grain tool received a giant speed boost as well as high quality preview mode now. So it's it's basically a real time tool. So it's been uh, really accelerated with the last release. Darlene, we got like three more minutes left. There's one question from Steven here. I think you'll enjoy sure. answering. Uh, he'd like to know how you think about where and who you photograph because he's really liking the creativity of your images. He'd like to know, you know, do you go and find folks? Do you art direct to get them there? Or do you look for opportunities? How do you approach this? Because you've got a lot of different approaches here. <laughs> I do. Um, so I've just gone back to my gallery here because depending on um, some of these were hired, like we hired the Agori man, um, the pineapple farmer, we actually visited his farm. I was doing uh, photo tours at the time, uh, the Cuban model, same thing, we hired her. Um, this is the same model here, but then some of the others, right? Like the street scene in India, this one here, just a street scene that I captured, same thing with, with this lady in Vietnam. Right, just a lady that we were walking around and she was happy to have her photo taken. Um, the Cuban lady, uh, she was a lady that was running a, um, she runs a tobacco farm and she was smoking. And I think I made her <laughs> smoke two cigars to get the shot that I wanted. Um, I'll do this antique one on here, works well. So a, a mix of both, right? And when I'm traveling, I actually speak pretty good Spanish. So getting models in Cuba or Peru or Spanish speaking countries, I have a better 
time making a rapport with people than, you know, say, for example, India, because I don't speak Hindi, right? So it helps if you have, um, in India, for example, we, my partner and I had a, a fixer, right? And I know, like, um, um, Matt Brandon and Pete Van and I, they do workshops in India as well. And they actually work with the same fixer we do in Varanasi. So it helps to have somebody with you, whether it's a, a local guide or a friend or um, somebody that speaks the language to be able to coordinate some of these things. Uh, but the lady in, this is a Venice carnival character. I don't speak Italian, but they're there in costume. So when you go to something like carnival, they're there for you to photograph and they want to be photographed, right? So it really depends. And the same thing with the anime characters, you know, when somebody has gone to the great lengths to create these costumes, these elaborate costumes, they want to be photographed. Is, is right? it like Times Square where they want to be photographed and tipped or is it just that they want to be photographed? No, in, in both of those cases, very much they just want to be photographed. In Venice, it's actually insulting because most of the characters are, are quite well to do. Um, some of the costumes cost thousands of dollars and they work on them for two and three years at a time. So it's actually insulting. And all they want is, is a copy. Like I actually have, <laughs> I'll show you, I'll unshare my screen here in a minute, but I have, I don't know if you can see me still, I've got all these business cards and they what they do is they'll give you a card uh, I don't have any from Venice, but they'll give you a card with their picture on it and their email. And they just say, you know, in exchange, please send me some of the photos. So I ended up with a stack of business cards, but it's brilliant that they put their photo on it so that I know who's who, right? At the end of the day. Very nice. Well, Darlene, this is excellent. Why don't you share the URL for your website? And, uh, and, and if you could take a look at the chat and the Q and A, there might be a few more questions and feel free to paste a few links in there. Uh, we're working hard. We, we should have that book out maybe even tonight or tomorrow morning. I was just going through one more quality pass, but you guys are going to like it. Darlene has a great chapter in there. Uh, Michelle Grenier, who's coming up a little bit later, has a chapter in there, as do some other folks. And what's awesome about it is it's not just editing advice. You also share your shooting philosophy. Uh, and we really believe in this holistic type of education here. We want to make editing easier, but we know that if you struggle with the shooting, it's, it's a little bit hard. So we want to do both for you there. So, Darlene, any other resources you want to share before we uh, invite our next guest? I shared a few links in the chat there. Um, I also do a weekly live editing on, on my YouTube channel, and that's uh, youtube.com slash digital photo mentor uh, slash live. And that's Wednesday evenings, uh, 6 Mountain Time. And I, I edit subscriber images. So people submit me their images, and I demonstrate how to edit them using a combination of Lightroom and Luminar. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing, Darlene. People always enjoy your approach and uh, we really appreciate how you help more people uh, learn more about Luminar and get things done. So thanks for coming today and uh, excellent stuff today. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Always a pleasure. Thanks.